This is TDO Tech Made Easy. Welcome to the channel. My channel is all about making things affordable, practical, and easy. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to re be readdressing an issue or a video that I made about three, four, maybe five months ago on Linux gaming and the comparisons between FPS between Windows and Linux. The first time I did that, the results for me were underwhelming. But I've seen other Linux users out there that have great performance and even sometimes better than Windows or the same. And so it was really kind of bothering me. Why did I get such low or disappointing results? One thing about our family is we all of the computers in our house are x99 systems. And x99 systems are is an older system now. And specifically, we run Xeons on all of our desktops. Um, and I did upgrade my personal desktop to a more current Xeon. Um, but as far as the rest of the family goes, they're all. But my test, but my testing PC is a Xeon PC. Uh, X99. And so I thought, well, maybe my results were because I'm using Xeons. Now, the results using those Xeons was fine in Windows, but in Linux, it just wasn't performing. And so I'm thinking, well, maybe I just need to upgrade. And I, it's been forever since I've bought anything newer. Most of the stuff I, most of these Xeon systems are 13, 14 years old. And so I thought, well, and one of the problems with Xeons is that they have a low megahertz rate. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to invest in something newer. Now, I may not be using that because I'm really doing a test for gaming, so one of my sons is going to get it, um, unfortunately or fortunately for him. So what I did is, uh, we'll go over the specs of that system here in a minute, um, but I went ahead and upgraded the system to some, some fairly new uh, so that I could really get a true result. And I was just wondering if having newer hardware would result in better FPS performance in, with Linux gaming. So, and just so you know, both my sons game, and one games with Windows, and now the other one games with Linux, and he's been gaming with Linux for a couple of months now. And they also play a lot of multiplayer games, and they have not had any problem playing those multiplayer games. Now, just so you know, that at least 95% of the games out there you can play on Linux, with the exception of some multiplayer games. And you got to realize it's only a handful of multiplayer games that aren't working on Linux, and Valve is working with developers to push them into getting their anti-cheat um, to run on Linux. But unfortunately, some of the most popular multiplayer games are the ones that Linux can't play. But at any rate, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect them because they don't play any of those. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through this test again and see what the results are with newer hardware. And when I say newer hardware, not everything is 2025. We're talking 2023, so on and so forth, because the hardware that I'm using uh, is at least 14 years old. So I'm excited to bring these results to you. So let's take a look and let's see how the results turned out. Okay, so I already mentioned why I'm testing this again. And years ago when I used to do gaming tests, I would load up M MCI Afterburner so I could get 1% low, so on and so forth. But um, but I just wanted to use the built-in benches. Um, I'm, I'm going to admit, I'm not a gamer. My boys are the gamers. Uh, and so it's just easier for me to use the built-in benches. Unfortunately, the built-in benches that are used, they don't all uh, report 1% lows. But I will, I will be talking about 1% lows a little bit in this presentation. So basically, I'm just using games that have built-in benches. That way, I'm comparing apples to apples. So let's just go ahead and go over the system here. So this is a testing system that I put together. It's an AMD 7, 7, 7700X. Now I couldn't afford the best uh, one out there, but the 7700X performs really close to the 9800s, the, the 9, AMD 9 9800s series. And so that's why I chose it. It's eight core, 16 threads, has a high um, <clears throat> megahertz rate. Then I, I went ahead and uh, went ahead and purchased a uh, RX 6900 XT. Again, this isn't the newest card out there, but I wanted a strong card to, to work with. I already tested some things a little bit with an RTX 3080, so I wanted to really test the uh, 6900 XT. And then I have 32 gigs of RAM, DDR5, uh, 600 megahertz RAM. Then I'm using Windows, and then I'm using Linux Bazite. Bazite is great. Uh, if you're just a gamer and all you have Windows for is gaming, load up Bazite, everything's there for you, and you're off and running. Um, you don't have to install Steam, it's already installed, Lutris is installed, a lot of, just a lot of things are installed ready for you to game. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at the results. I, I, I tested six games last time, 
I tested six games this time. Now, one of the things I didn't do is I, did, I tested F1 2020. Now, F1 2020 obviously is getting older. Um, F1 2020, for some reason, just performs terribly in Linux, and it still does. So I didn't, and I didn't test that one because uh, I figured it'd probably be better if I tested a newer version of F1, um, like 2024, 25, but nobody in our family does that, and I didn't want to buy something and just never use it again. So, um, so I went ahead and got fours of five. So, but let's just go ahead and move on here. And uh, so what I did is um, we have uh, Laura Croft, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and every, everything I tested what is in on the highest mode. Now, this in this particular case, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider is actually has a Linux version of it, and that's why you're going to see it performs really, really well. Um, so, and you can see on the left here, we have our results for Windows on our 1080p here, 216, uh, 2K or 1440K. We have 173, and then 92 for our 4K. On the Linux side, 1080p, we got uh, 222, a little bit better than Windows, and a little bit better than Windows on 2K at 180, and a little bit better on 4K at 100. So. And this one always tends to perform well when I'm ever doing uh, testing with Linux. Uh, but let's move on to the next ones that aren't Linux uh, compatible games. So for right now, if you're not familiar already, when you run Steam on Linux, in the settings they have a compatibility layer. And so that compatibility it allows you to play Windows games on Linux without them being uh, available on Linux itself. So once you choose that compatibility layer, then you can install all the Windows games you want. And so, um, so the rest of these games, they're not developed for Linux like uh, Tomb Raider is. So let's move on. And so now we have Borderlands 3. And again, I tested everything in the highest mode. Um, if there's one that I didn't, I'll let you know. But most of them are tested in the highest mode. Now, Borderlands 3, we have 136 for 1080p, 141 in Linux on 1080p. We have 116 on the 2K. We have 112 on Linux for 2K. Now, the reason why there is no 4K here with Borderlands 3 is Borderlands 3 was the last game I was testing. So I got through testing in 1080p and uh, 1440p, but then I had to quit and come back. Well, when I came back, Borderlands 3 had critical errors and would not run, wouldn't even boot. It just came up saying critical errors and all these error messages in Windows. And I just didn't want to take the time to reinstall it and run the test, so I don't have the results. But I can tell you right now, it would probably be pretty close to this 59 4K that we have in Linux. Um, it could have been 60, 61, but it would have been, you know, maybe off by a, a frame or two, frame per second. So, uh, so let's let's move on, and uh, let's go ahead and look at Gears 5. Now, as you can see here, 1080p, we got 187 and 182 for Linux, 135 for Windows, 136 for 2K in Linux, and we have 73 in Windows and we have 73 in Linux. And I failed to mention I am using Windows 11 to test this. Some of you people may think that's a mistake, not as good as performance. That kind of goes back and forth performance with Windows 11 and Windows 10 gaming, but I figure most people are gonna be gaming with Windows 11 eventually. So let's just go ahead and go to the next result. So this is, this is a good result. Um, um, we got Horizon Zero Dawn. Again, highest level, and uh, it doesn't perform quite as good in, in 1080p. Uh, we're at 188 and 175 with Linux with 2K or 1440p. Windows, we have 142 and 150 in Linux. And this is the thing that you're going to find is that sometimes maybe 1080p gaming isn't as good in Linux, but then you go to 2K and 4K and you get a better result. And I don't know if that's because Linux is just more efficient uh, with their CPU usage, so on and so forth. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, these are, these are the results I got. Um, and so now uh, we got Watchdog Legions. Watchdog Legions, um, the results here are the 1080p is a little underwhelming here. Um, the 2K, you know, we're talking 10 frames per second difference. And then uh, with 4K, you know, we're talking five frames per second difference. So now this is the thing that you're going to find when you game in Linux is that some games are going to perform really, really well. And sometimes they might perform a little better, even though there's a compatibility layer between Linux and that Windows game, sometimes they do perform a, a little better in Linux than they do in Windows. Um, obviously, this is not one of those cases. Um, but uh, so if we go here, then let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And so 1080p, basically, we got 156 and 154 uh, for Linux, um, 2K, 1440p, we have 121 for Windows, 118 for Linux, and then uh, 4K, we have 72 
for Windows and 69 for Linux. So it's not, a lot of times what you're gonna find is that it's only a, a couple of frames per second difference. Okay, so I just wanna mention here is that most of my games that have built-in benches, most of them are AAA games and so I'm not, uh, and I'm testing them all in the highest mode possible. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of games out there that, that, that you can get a lot higher frames per second in 1080p, you know, you can get into the 200, 300, so on and so forth. Um, uh, but I just don't have very many of those. And then we do have, as you saw, there are, there was some results of 1080p being in the 200s. But um, so so I'm so unfortunately with the games I'm testing with these built-in benches, uh, I'm kind of restricted to somewhat AAA games. Um, but at at any rate, what I want to do here is the next slide. I'm going to show you that I went ahead and take Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I ran FSR on it on balance mode. And so let's see what kind of difference that made in our frames per second here. So here we are on the left, we have our FSR balanced. And then when on the right, we have just, uh, uh, then we just have gameplay raw. And so you're gonna notice uh, that we almost got to 200 frames per second by, by going to FSR in our 1080p results. And then in our uh, 2K results, and again, they're, they're practically even like they were with, uh, without running FSR. But the one thing that I noticed is how big of gains I got running 4K with FSR balance, both Windows and Linux. Um, I, was, I was pretty impressed with that. But what, what I wanna do now is I wanna show you uh, the 1% lows when I was running this in, um, <clears throat> when I was running this in the FSR balance. Now, these 1% lows, what the results that you're gonna see are also typical if I wasn't using FSR. So let's go ahead and move to that slide. And what you're going to see here on the right here, these are the 1% lows. And, and you'll see Windows 131 for 1024, but 150 for Linux. 1% lows for 2K for Windows 115, Linux 138. For 2K 88 for Windows, 96 for Linux. So um, one thing that I have noticed with other people testing gaming in Linux is that a lot of times the 1% lows are better in Linux than they are in Windows. Don't ask me why, uh, so on and so forth. That's, you know, I, I can't tell you the reason why. And the reality is they shouldn't be because most of these games are using that compatibility layer to run games in Linux. Imagine if the games were ported to Linux and you could run them in Linux without the compatibility layer. Um, and I, I do foresee a day where a lot of game map, a lot of game developers will be developing their games for both Windows and Linux. Um, now, the rush isn't quite there uh, just because they don't necessarily have to as long as they're using that compa Proton compatibility layer. So let's move on to for uh, Forza 5. You're going to notice here on Forza 5 that the, the frame rates are, are definitely lower. Um, not as bad as F1 2020 though, um, but, but you, in 1080p we have 232, in Linux we have 190. Uh, we have 218 with 1440p um, and 183 uh, with Linux. 148 4K with Windows, 130 uh, with Linux. So you are going to see a handful of games that, that the performance isn't, it, 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 it's, um, it's disappointing, uh, basically. And I'm not saying you can't play uh, Forza 5 in Linux. Obviously you can um, with these FPS results. But just every once in a while, you may f run into a game where the FP FPS results aren't close to Windows. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just the nature of gaming in Linux right now. But one thing I do want to talk about really quick that I don't have a slide for is one thing that my boys do like to play with, um, between themselves and, and their friends is the finals. And the finals is a multiplayer game. My son has no problem playing the finals in, in Linux. And so uh, it doesn't have a built-in bench, but I just observed uh, the frames per second uh, uh, playing playing the game. And one thing I noticed is that in the finals, both in 1080p, 2K, and 4K, uh, the frames per second were at least, uh, Linux had at least a 10 frames per second advantage in playing the finals on Linux than it did on Windows, uh, which is still impressive uh, that, that, that Linux can have a higher frame rate um, playing a Windows game. Um, so, but at any rate, um, I hope this was helpful. And again, I'm gonna leave the link down below where the guy tests 18 games. Um, you'll be able to see that give and take sometimes 
again, Windows does better than Linux. Sometimes Linux does better than Linux, but, but it's not always by a lot. Sometimes it's only by a few frames per second. Sometimes it could be five or 10 frames per second better. And a lot of times in 1080p, a lot of those games perform better in Linux. So if you saw my video beforehand, you would have seen that the gaming in Linux was kind of a disappointment with some of the FPS results that I got. And that's why I wanted to update my hardware that I'm testing Linux gaming on. Because a lot of people are not, most people are not gaming on Xeon CPUs. Now our family does, and just because those are the type of desktops that were cheap and expensive, great performance for a desktop. And the Windows performance gaming in there is actually pretty good on those Xeons version one, version or the 2600 V3s and the 2600 V4s. Uh, but when it comes to Linux gaming, they don't perform very good. So I just wanted to give Linux gaming uh, <clears throat> a fair start by buying hardware that most people would be gaming with um, and not uh, Linux or, and not particularly older Xeons. And I, I'm obviously much more happier with the results. You can see that most of the games performed um, really close to Windows, maybe a little better than Windows. Now you're going to run into some games because it is using a compatibility layer that isn't going to perform as, as well as Windows. And it could be uh, 10 frames per second slower than in Windows. Um, but I think you're going to find a lot of games are pretty much dead even with Windows um, with a little bit of variance in frames per second. So very happy with these results. It's just a great time to consider gaming in Linux. And I'm not saying it's a perfect world gaming in Linux. But I will say this much, if you're going to game, the first thing I would do is I would try, I would load up Bazite first and see how you like it, because Bazite's going to load everything up for you. It's a simple install. I'll be doing a video on how to install that. I'm going to do a video on maybe four or five different uh, distros to game with on Linux. Um, but Bazite is just slick. It, Steam is already installed. You're just ready to go. Now, why didn't I test this with um, SteamOS? Because SteamOS just came out. That's part of the reason why I didn't test it with SteamOS because I haven't had the time to even try to install it and test it. And maybe I would get a little bit better results because SteamOS is really, is really streamlined for gaming. But one thing you have to realize with SteamOS is SteamOS really is written or produced to run on a handheld. Even though you can run it on a desktop. Now the reason why that's important is because the handheld manufacturers are making their handhelds according to what they need to make uh, gaming efficient on a handheld and so and and steam or valve has really concentrating on making gaming on a handheld uh, really efficient i'm not saying it won't be efficient on the desktop it will but it may not have the necessary drivers or compatibility for your specific for your specific system because again they're focusing on the handhelds eventually maybe the desktop version would become more liable for a daily driver um, but there there's probably going to be things in there that you can't normally do that you can do in linux maybe certain apps that you can't install so on but again hardware you could have run into hardware problems because everything all drivers are baked into the kernel with linux and and valve is only interested in putting in drivers that they need for the handhelds that doesn't mean if you have an amd system with an amd card it would probably work it'd probably work great but anyway, this is TG with Tech Made Easy. I hope that was helpful. Um, I just had to, it was time for me to try a new system. Um, I don't need a new system like the one that I got here. That's why I'm probably gonna give it to my, my son. Um, and, and I do use Linux as a daily driver, but I'm not a gamer. So it's not important for me to have the latest and greatest in hardware to do the work that I need to do on my personal desktop. Um, so. But anyway, I hope that was helpful and enlightening. This is TJ with Tech Made Easy. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Now that was easy peasy.